Hi, my name is Ann Sermons Gillis, and recently a friend of mine told me that she was concerned about someone in her family. And I replied, well, I'll pray for her. And she said, you know, I always want to pray for people, but I don't know how to pray. How do you pray? So I told her how I prayed, and I thought I'd like to share that with you. When I was younger, I believed in a God that was external, someone that was more like a Santa Claus, and that that was really good. And I asked for good things for people, that this benevolent God would shower out these blessings of affection. But as I grew older, I began to discover something much broader and much bigger. And that's a power that lives in me. And that's a power that lives in everything in the universe. And I discovered also that I affect that by my thoughts towards others and my thoughts toward events and my thoughts toward myself. And this is how I pray for others, one way that I pray for others. And the way it looks is that in front of the person, I call up an image of a light or an angel or a group of people that I know that love that person or Jesus or Buddha or Krishna or Babaji or Ramana or Gangaji, um, Papaji. I see what I think are powerful figures and I place the image in front of the person in my mind and then and I just shower them with love and then I place the images behind them and shower that person with love and protection and care and then I see this same image of well-being and different spiritual teachers and masters on the right side and I repeat it onto the left side and then as above above and then below and sometimes I, I don't just do it in one or two moments but sometimes I spend as much as 10 minutes sending this energy and this light and these loving presences to the person of concern it's similar to the Native American. The Native American works the medicine wheel. They have the, the north, the south, the east, the west, above and below. And so this is similar to that. But regardless of what tradition it is, I've seen miraculous results. I've talked to someone, for example, that I prayed to who had been in a long-term depression. And I said, how are you doing? And they said, well, for some reason, something happened this morning and the depression broke. And that just happened to be the morning that I had prayed for them. Now, I don't think that I'm magic and I think anything special, but I do believe that there is a law. And using that law with love allows us to connect with and to give an energetic leg up, so to speak. So there you have it, a form of dynamic prayer that invokes the presence of love in someone else's life. Use it. I think you'll enjoy this way of prayer. Another way to stop worrying about a loved one is to pray for them, their success. See them with positive images of success. So here's a 31-day success blessing that comes from my book, Offbeat Prayers for the Modern Mystic. Do this when you're concerned about someone that... Um, it just bums you out because they're not okay and you, fi you find yourself stressing and worrying. So here's the prayer. I bless you with success. I bless you with the success that springs from deep within your being, an inner success that is outpictured in your physical world. I bless your inner knowing so that you might be able to feel the success of the universe in your being. I bless you to go out into the world and be successful. You are created in the image of your Creator. Your Creator is all successful, as are you. I unleash the powers of heaven to act on your behalf. I invoke the strength and courage that lie within 
so that you might serve the universe as a messenger of love. May you be successful in all your undertakings and may you experience your natural relationship with all that is sacred. May your soul be restful and your mind peaceful. May your heart be flooded with enthusiasm for all your creations and for life itself. May you be blessed of a vision of the sacred connection between all things. May you possess the wisdom to never violate that connection or consciously do anything that harms the circle of life. May you feel the love that stands ready to assist you in all your creations. Love surrounds you and guides you towards success. May all your endeavors be undertaken in the service of love and for the glory of God, the good. Amen. Okay, so here's a prayer for you so you can let go and feel better about yourself and everything. <laughs> it's a codependency prayer, again, from my book, Offbeat Prayers for the Modern Mystic. God, grant me the grace to let others have their addictions, upsets, and imperfections without trying to fix them, change them, or solve their problems. Give me the courage to say no when I want to, and the, and the wisdom to reach out for help when I'm in denial. Heal my need to please others or control them. Help me to accept with serenity my imperfections. Open my visions so that I know that I am precious and make me aware that my expression is valuable. Amen. Okay. Tired of being good all the time? Helping everyone out? Harried? This one's for you. Hark the harried angel sings. Two more days and I'll have wings. If I'm good and help you out, I'll get wings without a doubt. If I'm nice and do not fuss, if I help clean up the dust, if I make my presence bright, I'll be one of God's true lights. Hark, the harried angel sings, two more days and I'll have wings. Hark, the harried angel sings, I'm so tired of doing things. I'm so tired of being good. I'm so tired of all these shoulds. I just want to take a rest. I just want to be the guest. I am feeling mighty rough. I'm so tired of all this stuff. Hark, the harried angel sings. Two more days and I'll have wings. Hark, the happy angel sings. I'm retired from doing things. I gave up my heavenly chores. It won't be hard anymore. I gave up being nice. I gave up the heavenly price. No more sacrifice for me. I am feeling mighty free. Hark, the happy angel sings. Now I have my happy wings. <laughs>